good lord travis 430 degrees and this stuff is still intact what's up everybody welcome to the world's worst fishing i'm your host chris jones thank you for being here today we are um on the road to 100,000 subscribers and we will reach 95,000 today so thank you everyone uh channel growth has been really great lately um so we will get there soon and when we do we're gonna have an awesome giveaway um we're gonna put together some pretty cool giveaway packages as you know a way of saying thanks for the support um however today's video is going to be pretty awesome it's normally new mold day around here but today it's new plastic day from dead on plastics they have released all new formulas a brand new third option to the market so dead on plastics has their uh, black bucket sinking blend they have their white feather floating blends and now they have the red label blends and we will get into what the red label blend is and um any pros and cons we're going to do uh obviously a demonstration with the plastic and probably do a little bit of compare and contrast um with their other blends however i got something to show you guys yeah so uh here's something different um i'm calling this one hologram crappy and uh, I actually first saw this pattern with this sort of, you know, uh, hologram colors with the kind of lime green heads in a crankbait uh, from Bubba's Baits. Really awesome uh, crankbait painter, super talented guy. And I said, you know what? I have to try that in plastic. So I have the black sinking worm blend. I have the red label soft, which is the same durometer. So the worm blend is the soft durometer. Finesse would be extra soft. But basically we have all three categories of plastic now in the same exact durometer, three entire full gallon jugs. So I think this is what we're gonna kind of work on here. As the video goes on, we'll, uh, we'll cook up some worm plastic, some red label soft, and then some black label worm, and, uh, and just kind of show you what each looks, looks like. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. This is gonna be fun. I have not gotten to do this in a long time. Um, you know, it's, it's not every day, not every year that a brand new, entirely new Plastisol formula is released. Okay, so here's the red label Plastisol right here, right? And um, what this is, is this is another option to the market, okay? This is an alternative to the current Dead on Plastics blend. And what Dead on Plastics um, has been doing for you know, golly, a, a number of years now, is they've been making plastisols that are made without phthalates, okay? So the whole argument that you always have with soft plastics is phthalates versus non-phthalates, right? And, and phthalates are basically a, a, a phthalic acid chemical, as, as far as my understanding, that are used in the plasticizers. What are plasticizers? Plasticizers are the oils that, that help um, the flexible PVC resins suspend and you have to have a certain ratio of your resin to your plasticizer to get that mix right to where your bait is pliable and bendable right so any soft plastic lure you know what are the pro if you just think what are the properties of a soft plastic lure they're malleable they're bendable right that comes from the ratio of plasticizer oils to the um, PVC resins. And so this is a phthalate plasticizer option. So essentially it's a cheaper option, right? You would never pay the same for diesel as you would gasoline, or you wouldn't pay the same for, for high octane gasoline versus 87, right? There are just, there's just a difference in the cost and quality of materials. So it might sound a little counterproductive to me to say, but it like, the, the, they don't want you switching to this if you're already using the uh, the white feather floating or the black label sinking, right? Um, however, you know some people don't like the uh, the non phthalate blends that dental plastics have. You know, uh, there's there's a common complaint that some people you know have they think they have to stir it too much or it comes out a little sticky and tacky, um, and some of that is due to the nature of the non phthalate plasticizers. Now, you know personally, you know. The, I've been working with the dental plastics for years now. I find it to be extraordinarily user friendly. I don't mix it any more than I did my old plastic. You know, when I was using 
um, you know, uh, lure works, uh, color technologies, plastic. I probably actually mixed it more because it hard packed. So, you know, there's always arguments to be made. What this is, is an option to the market that would rather pay a lower price point for a plastic that maybe does not need to have the non-phthalate plasticizers and the uh, and the more expensive ingredients. You know, it's it's going to cure very clear. It's not going to cloud after it cures, and uh, and it's going to be really great for injection. It will not have the same pourable properties as the black label. Uh, you know, that stuff stays workable at really low temperatures, which is great when you're hand pouring. This is a little bit more catered to the high volume shooting star injection crowd that are already using cheaper phthalate plastisols from other manufacturers, but this I feel like is priced appropriately. So let's quit rambling and get into it. Okay, so the new red label is like any other plastic. It needs to be mixed and it needs to be cooked correctly. So we will demonstrate all of the proper plastisol preparation uh, steps today. But as you can see, it's very separated, okay? You can clearly see the, the thicker stuff here and then the more clear stuff here. These are your plasticizers, right? These are those phthalates, right? And then here's most of your resin. Okay, so essentially in the, in the uh, gallon jug, you just wanna give it a shake, right? I wouldn't get too violent with it. And uh, what I used to do when I was uh, running jugs a lot, so I would actually set it upside down for, I don't know, you know, 30 minutes uh, or so before I was gonna use it and really just let those oils just kinda settle in. Um, but for today's purposes, we're just gonna go ahead and give this a couple shakes. All right, it really does not need much despite what anyone tells you. This is not hard packing Plastisol, neither are the other two blends. And uh, you know, you really don't have to just stir it and mix it till your arm falls off. That's a complete wives tale. All right, let's fire it off. We'll start with four minutes since that was two measuring cups of Red Label. Okay, here we go. So that was four minutes and it looks like we are still largely in gel phase. Yeah, but uh, wow. Yeah, look at the clarity there. Very, very clear. Yep, nice thick gel phase. So far, uh, really no bubbles to show, so that's good. But you know, you would you always kind of expect um, you know pretty pretty clean plastic uh, when it's new. Hasn't been uh, beaten up by moisture exposure, so yeah, this is looking exactly like we want it to. But yeah, it's uh, it's still very much in gel phase, so uh, we definitely need a little bit a little bit longer cook time. I would say. I would say just for like a compare and contrast, the same amount of plastic in this cup of the black label would be a little bit further along in the cook cycle. So I think maybe this one's gonna take uh, just a little bit more in the microwave, but we're off to a great start. Yeah, here we go. So just to uh, kind of give y'all some perspective on uh, how see-through this stuff is looking, you can uh, pretty much read that sticker on the bottom. So let's see where we're at. 350 degrees Fahrenheit to really get it all the way. I don't quite think we're there yet. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna get a little bit past 300, but uh, that should be that should be heating up much faster. All right, another quick remelt, and then we'll be right back. All right, we are officially there. Internal temperature has reached or exceeded 350. There it is. All right. As you can see, crystal clear, no bubbles. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to sort of do a reheat test, okay? So we're gonna run some four inch tracer shads as sort of our control mold, okay? And then we're going to recycle and recycle and recycle through this same cup of plastic and uh, sh basically see how she takes reheat and then compare the results at the end. And I must say, so far for a phthalate plastic, this stuff does not smell terrible. A lot of phthalate blends will uh, run you out of the room. This one's very mild, does not smoke very much. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed so far. Yeah. Wow, that stuff looks like water. All right, guys, first ever 
Uh, example, in the new Red Label plastic for me, you know I gotta do a drum roll. I really hope this color came out. <laughs> All right. Yep, that's incredible. No vac chamber, no nothing. Yep, looks like glass. How great is this mold too? All right. So here is round one. Yeah, incredible. Incredible. And uh, first impressions, it's very light. It, it, it's not quite the heavy, dense feel of the sinking plastic. Again, different ingredients, different resins. Um, it, it also sets up very fast and dry, so it doesn't have any of that tack to it that you might experience uh, with, with the, with the uh, black label. Um, so it's, it's gonna set up and, and feel really dry to the touch right away. Um, so that's, uh, to, to me, that's actually very good for mass injection when you're just running the molds, running the molds. Um, you know, the faster it can set up and peel out of the mold cleanly, the better. Um, <clears throat> okay, and that's one of the great things about the White Feather Floating Blend. Um, it has this exact kind of light, buoyant feel about it, and, uh, and it's also very dry. All right, so what we're going to do so we're going to basically set these out as examples, okay? So the first, the first run, we're going to put far left, and then we're just going to go in order, and, uh, and then we'll have some to compare and contrast. All right, so here it is again after about a 40-second uh, long remelt, or, or not necessarily remelt, reheat. I'm just keeping it hot. But, you know, you, uh, you, you got to reheat your plastic as you go. Um, you know, it was starting to really set up uh, there on the sides Yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's nice and workable. So we'll go ahead and uh, just run another mold here of the tracers Okay, so this is after one kind of reheat cycle. I don't think there's gonna be any discernible change. Yep. Nope Not at all still looks like little ice crystals or ice sculptures. Um, so what we're gonna do now Yeah is we're actually gonna let the plastic set up, okay? And then do a true remelt, okay? So while you're actually working through this cup of plastic, you know, you're gonna be running your molds, you only need to do a little sporadic reheats. You're not necessarily letting it set up to, to you know, full firmness in the cup and then uh, remelting it. But to test the plastic, that's what we're gonna do. So um, essentially, we're gonna lay these out on our tray. All right, and then we're gonna do an actual real remelt of the plastic. So we're gonna let it set up a little bit. All right, so so far in this video, we've talked a lot about clarity, right? I mean, we've been looking at how clear the plastic is, how clear it is after reheat, clarity, clarity, clarity. Why are we talking about clarity so much when the majority of your soft baits are not gonna be clear, right? Most of the time you're adding color to a bait so why does all this clarity stuff matter? And why it matters is that is evidence and a sign of quality. Um, if you were just to completely blindfold me and not tell me what brand of plastic I'm using until, uh, in, until it's cooked, right? I don't see a label, I don't see a brand name, I just see how it's cooked by itself. That's the first judgment I'm gonna make is does it stay clear? Does it cook clear? Is it made with good plastici uh, plasticizers? Is it made with good resins? Um, how well does it take reheat? Does it start to cloud up after it cures? Does it stay clear right after chemical uh, curing? Um, and is it still clear a week later, a month later? That's how I'm gonna judge it before I do anything else, before I worry about flake suspension, before I worry about um, you know durability, um, how's the action of the physical bait in the water? You know, all of these things are how we judge plastic. But as a bait maker, a lot of how we're judging it is on the use of it, right? How user-friendly is it? And a lot of that comes down to reheatability, right? As a small bait maker, you're going to be, you know, heating up your plastic, shooting some, and then you want to remelt those leftovers. You want to keep cycling through your materials to use up every drop that you can, and you can't do that if your stuff's starting to discolor or burn. So that's kind of why we're putting such an emphasis on clarity today. It is 
it, it is the, the, the easiest visual proof of quality. All right, so now the plastic is uh, set up, as you can see. All right, <clears throat> so let's bring her on back over here. And uh, we'll start with a 45 second remelt on that and see where that gets us. All right, so here we go. We've got everything uh, basically remelted. You can see I've uh, stirred some bubbles into it. So uh, we're gonna throw this into the uh, vac chamber and uh, get, get some of those bubbles out. But uh, I think it is largely ready for, um, for another round. Yep, I'd say round three passed the test after one full actual remelt cycle. Yeah, no discernible difference. All right, this is the fourth remelt on this set from the same cup and uh, yeah, I would say no discernible difference. It has passed the re-melt, re -melt, recycle, reheat test. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a smaller cup of it and just see what temperature abuse it can take before it starts to yellow. All right, so let's see where it's at now. All right, so we're a little over 370, we're approaching 380. And I mean, you can tell that stuff still looks perfect. It is not yellow, it is not tinted, it's still clear. A lot of times uh, when they get too hot, it'll get a little yellow and it'll start to cloud on you, then it turns green, then it turns black. So as you can see, 400 degrees basically and the plastic is perfect now however this is a soft blend which is usually clearer and can be reheated more because there's less resin for for it to degrade and discolor so i would not expect the hard blend or a saltwater blend to reach 400 degrees and still look like that so we're going to heat it up a little bit more all right y'all we are back and uh, you can see we are at 400 I mean, well over 400 degrees now, and uh, this stuff still looks really good. Maybe a little bit cloudy, um, and definitely smoking a lot more, so it is definitely reaching its limit. But I mean, good Lord, Travis, 430 degrees, and this stuff is still intact. Let's give it another 25 seconds and see what happens. All right, so now if you look at it, see how it looks very cloudy? It's starting to get cloudy, and it's starting to get a little stinky. So I think uh, we have definitely reached its limit. It has not necessarily burned yet, but uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's about there. So I can, I, you know, you're, you're never going to be using this stuff at 400 degrees, much less 400. And so, good gosh. Yeah, you're never going to see temperatures, anything like this uh, in terms of your workflow. But uh, man. It, it hit well over 400 degrees and stayed intact. So, uh, wow. Incredible. All right, now let's move on to the black sinking worm. And uh, we're not gonna spend near as much time, you know, going through remelts and stuff. Basically what I just wanna show is just uh, how the red label matches up, just, uh, just in a clarity test. All right, and there is uh, the Black Label Non-Phthalate Sinking Worm Blend. Not bad for a jug that was well over a year old. It had not been opened, but that jug was old. Let me tell you, I do not use a lot of worm blend. So let's go ahead and uh, do a shot here in the tracer mold. All right. Yeah, looking good. Sorry about some of the shadows. It's a little dark out today we had a, a big storm blow through uh, this morning yeah look at that that's looking good all right let's look at the black label worms or worm blend shall we say yeah wow there it is yeah oh yeah it's got just a different feel to it wow Wow, wow, wow. So here it is with the first run of tracers and the red label soft. Can you tell which is which? And this is not to say one plastic's better than the other. I'm just simply saying, wow, what an awesome new family member to the dead on to the dead on plastics lineup. You know, this is what you know the standard has been and yeah the new is absolutely incredible 
That right there speaks to how strong the Dead on Plastics catalog is. All right, everybody. White feather floating. All right, just so that you can see it go in here. All right, time to fire it up. Okay, and here is the uh, white feather floating. As you can see, definitely not as see-through uh, clear in the cup. However, it's what the finished bait that cures up looks like that counts. And there again, this, um, this jug of uh, feather floating worm blend was from my bait seminar, which was last July. Uh, so I'm working on some, uh, some pretty, pretty old plastic here. It's had plenty of uh, temperature changes out here, but it was unopened. So, uh, so it's still looking very good. It's, this is still very fresh plastic. You know, one thing I'll say about Plastisol is it really doesn't have a shelf life. You know, it, it really doesn't go bad. Um, you know, the only thing that harms it is exposure to moisture in which the resins will absorb it. All right, last but not least, feather floating worm blend. Let's see how she looks. Oh yeah, there it is guys. Oh, we got a little bit of a injection boo-boo there. Yeah, sweet. Check this out, there it is. And this feels exactly like this. So this is the red label, right? The, uh, the white fetter floating feels almost identical in, in as far as um, how dry it is, right? It's, it's a very dry plastic. Uh, the durometer is extremely consistent. There's no discernible difference there. So the worm blend you're getting here, uh, if you're used to feather floating, is, is also the worm blend that you're getting here. Um, very consistent in terms of durometer. So you can see that this one takes the takes the wind here and clarity just by a smidge. You know, some of that may be the age of this uh, plastic. Um, you know, this was a very old jug, as was the worm blend and the black label. Um, but this is also a very different type of plastic, being that it's hyperbuoyant and non-phthalate. So uh, there is sort of a uh, oops <laughs> compare and contrast between those two. And then here is the black label worm. There it is, guys. All three families of dead-on plastics, absolutely incredible products. Let's move on. All right, there it is, red label medium. Looking absolutely smoking there. And I don't just mean because it's hot and smoking. I mean that, well, you know what I mean. Yep, very clear. Absolutely uh, looking great there. There it is, guys. Red label medium. Oh yeah, that feels like a medium too. That feels really good. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. Very, very good firmness there. And now for the red label hard. Let's get her in the cup. All right, here it is. The hard durometer red label. Yep. And just to do a little compare and contrast, just because it's so it's hard to tell sometimes on clarity. This is oops. This is the worm blend from the beginning. So as you can see, definitely a little bit more clear. But I mean, holy cow! For a firm, hard like this is not medium hard. This is hard. This is uh, firmer than craw tube blend. And uh, yeah, as you can see, freaking crystal clear. All right, so here we have some of the Red Label Medium, and uh, we're gonna whip up some watermelon candy, an absolutely beautiful color. All right, that is MF Dark Watermelon as the base. And um, you know, one of the reasons why I'm choosing this color um, is because there's a lot of flakes, uh, flakes that go in it, right? So, oops, <laughs> did not mean for that to spill out. All right, so we're gonna go with medium-sized black flake. You know, and, and the whole thing here is to really look at flake suspension. We are obviously going to make some baits with it, but then we're going to let the puck sit and just see how the flake settles out during that entire slow cool down period, um, which uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see. All right, a little bit of per, uh, blue flake. So, I don't know, watermelon candy is technically with purple flake instead of blue, but this is what we're going to do. 
So this is watermelon blue candy. And then some medium green flake. So lots of flakes to look at. Lots of flakes to, uh, to watch. And uh, makes a really pretty color. All right, and this is the uh, AI uh, AR frog. So we're just gonna go ahead and do some frogs because I really wanna see some real bait <laughs> today in the new plastic, not just a bunch of clear. Then we're gonna go ahead and uh, purge that back into the cup. And then like I said, we're just gonna set that aside and come back and see how that flake has suspended. Woo yeah. Looking good there. Right on. And uh, normally I would make a frog in craw tube blend, which is a medium firm. Um, however, this one being straight medium, uh, this actually feels pretty good, you know? That, that's got a good feel to it. So I think that would be in a very, a very appropriate plastic for making frogs, but yeah. yeah. Looking real good. I just, uh, hey, I wanted to make a real bait that I would really use today. <laughs> Even though this is really about the plastic, right? Like that right there is what we've really been doing. But this is really what the end goal is, right? Is a bait that you're gonna put in front of a fish yeah, there it is. <clears throat> really great flake suspension. So what you're looking for is, are the flakes thicker down at the bottom, right? Did they all settle at the bottom? Or do they look about the same all throughout the puck? And they look exactly the same. And these are medium-sized flakes. So the larger size the flake, um, generally the more it sinks. So like the little teeny tiny stuff is always going to suspend a little bit better. But that's why I used a bunch of medium sized flakes here. And yeah, that is absolutely perfect. So yeah, there it is. Okay, everybody. Well, uh, I will not be long because I'm sure this video has already been long enough. Um, yeah, we definitely got our second round of weather coming in. But uh, hey, new Plastisol day doesn't happen often. Uh, thanks to Dead On Plastics for just being that company in the home bait maker community that is always thinking about the bait maker first, you know? And and really, that's why they've been non-phthalate Plastisol for so many years, is because it really is the better health option for the, uh, for the end user. Um, and those are just made with a little bit more quality ingredients. How, you know, how, however, ingredients aside, you can see that red label stuff, absolutely amazing. That is not a normal, you know, uh, budget, budget phthalate plastic you know i have used cheaper phthalate plastics and they were absolutely nothing like this this has absolutely reset the bar on what your budget plastisol should be and um you know only the guys at dead on you know are are i think that forward thinking that's not a bash at any other company but you know dead on plastics was started by bait makers for bait makers and that's the difference same with ai molds um you know, started by a fisherman who had a passion for making molds and creating baits, and AI is what you get. So um, in any event, Red Label Plastic is here. Check it out. I'm gonna show you the listing for it real quick. The pricing is absolutely phenomenal. Um, definitely check it out, and uh, leave me some comments down below. You know, if you are already a dead-on user, are you gonna stick with the plastic that you're using, or do you think you might switch over to the Red Label? And if you're not a dead-on plastic user, if you're using um, a different brand of plastic, what do you think? Are you going to give it a shot? At least give it a try? Um, thanks again, guys, for being here. We will see you all in the next video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We are almost to that 100,000, and we will see you there. So here's the new Red Label Medium, right? $27 for one gallon. That's absolutely incredible. And let's see, five gallons of Red Label, $94.99. Absolutely incredible. Like a good phthalate plastisol should be priced. So like if we just wanna contrast that, right? A gallon of sinking black label is 35. Um, and 110 basically for five gallon. Um, so yeah, incredibly attractive, attractive pricing here on the Red Label. And uh, as you can see, incredibly awesome stuff. All right, we're really going to go this time.